This is Male Entrepreneur Podcast. Let me go ahead and start the recording on my end. Record on this computer. This is Male Entrepreneur Podcast, and we're going to be talking about some crazy stuff today. We are live (laughs) in three, two. All right, welcome back to Male Entrepreneur, the podcast for men who win with your host, Pradeep Sangha. Pradeep, how are you doing today, man? What's up, man? I'm doing awesome. Doing good, man. The weather is nice. It's beautiful outside. I can't uh, can't complain. Nice. And you are, for for the listeners that aren't aware, you're up in Canada. How has uh, has spring been up there so far? Uh, Actually, non-existent so far. I think it's finally starting to come. Uh, we had uh, we had snow, I think, up until like a week and a half ago, and so it wasn't it wasn't staying on the ground, but it was colder. The mornings have been cold, but I I see some I see some light at the end of the tunnel. I'm just looking out my window right now. I have, my office has like a, I love my office actually because I have windows and all three uh, basically all three walls in the back here are windows, so I get to look outside. I see birds uh, every so often though. I get the bird that comes flying into my window, and that's not fun. <laughs> uh, cause I'll just be doing something and be like, Bump! and I'll be like, Oh crap. So I got to run outside. Hopefully it hasn't broken its neck and I'll have to sit there and spend some time. Sometimes even take it to the vet if I have to, but that's, uh, that happens probably, you know, it's funny. It pro- it's not funny. I don't like it, but I just speak about it funny, you know, comically, but it happens probably at least six times yeah, within like the summer months, like once a month. I, I never thought that actually happened in real life. I thought it was just something that happened on like window cleaner commercials or something. No, man. I, I've unfortunately, there's been a lot of dead birds because of it. It's kind of sad, but oh I don't goodness. know. I don't know what to do. That's why I posted, you, you know, the, the, the logos in the back there. That's one of the reasons why. So birds have a, some common sense, but we'll see what happens. Holy cow. Okay. What a weird way to start the show. <laughs> um, what what are we going to be talking about? I've I've been excited to discuss this topic with you, but I want to let you uh, introduce it to the listeners. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of those topics that's going to make you either curious, wonder, or be like, these guys are complete kooks. And it's the power of consciousness. And that's really tapping into a higher power, tapping into the universal power out there. Um and I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm a strong, I'm a firm believer, not only because I've studied this, the research behind it, but also because I've been a practitioner. And, and it's one of the main reasons, uh, if not the biggest reason um, why I am where I am, Nathan, is because I truly believe that there's a higher power out there that we as humans can tap into. Okay, so just a fair warning for the listeners, this discussion is probably going to get pretty woo. And... I'm a very skeptical person, but there's certain things that I can't explain. And okay, so I'm going to start off by saying this. I had a potential client hit me up and he teaches meditation and he teaches self-mastery, but he also teaches what appears to be control over control over self first of all but and man and i don't even know how to say this without just say I'm, it man just say it <laughs> he can control the wind which sounds ridiculous but i've seen multiple videos of this guy going out on a completely normal calm day and he does videos where he has either a, a windmill fan or he'll stand by the trees and he'll start meditating and he'll start doing like these weird chant type things and the wind starts blowing and it starts blowing whichever direction he moves his hand. And I've seen multiple videos and he just goes live on Facebook. He's like, okay, I'm going to go out today. I'm going to do it. And I can't figure out how he'd be faking the videos. And I had a long discussion with him and he just says, he says that it's all about meditation. And he says that people don't understand the connection that they have with their soul to the physical world around them. And again, I sound like a crazy person to myself saying this, but I wanted to talk to you about about this because I figured maybe I don't have all the answers and maybe there's explanations outside of the culture that I grew up in. And I was being incredibly racist, I guess, when I asked you, hey, Pradeep, what do you know about this? No, it's all good, man. First of all, you're not nuts. 
Um, second of all, controlling wind, that would be pretty cool. You know, I was going to say my kids control wind, but in a completely different facet because my kids just obsessed with farts right now. I know that's a completely <laughs> different tangent. But when we talk about wind and we talk about all these elements, that just popped up because I see my kid outside. He's just jumping around like a monkey. But yeah, in all, in, all, in all reality, man, there is more to this world than what we see. There's a lot more. And, uh, you know, we can talk about the science behind it. We can talk about the spirituality behind it. But we as humans have the ability to, uh, I'm not going to say control elements completely because I've never come across someone that can uh, control the wind. But we have the ability to control physical matter in aspects um, because we are just walking, talking blobs of energy. And our world around us is just made up of energy and space. And so I've experienced this personally myself. Um, and I don't share this with a lot of people, Nathan, because I just don't want them to look at me in, a, in an odd aspect. And, and if, unless you've actually experienced it, you won't completely understand it, right? We see it on movies, we hear about it, but until you actually experience it, you're like, okay, this is weird. And let me share a story with you. When, uh, when I was in grade 10, my uh, teacher came up to me and said, "Pretty, why were you not in the award ceremony last night? And I said, why would I have been at the award ceremony last night? And uh, she basically said, she said, you won pretty much every single award hmm. in the school for this grade. And I said, are you serious? She's like, yeah, you're going to need a wheelbarrow to take him home. And I just thought, I said, this is kind of strange. I've never, what do you mean by that? And that's when I realized that I was doing things differently than other people. And I don't want to say I'm special. That's not what it is because there's people that train people on this, Nathan, but it's the ability to tap into our mind. It's the ability to tap into our soul. I just happened to do that at a younger age. And that actually came through meditation. And so not even my, my family knows the stuff that I used to do back when I was younger um, in terms of meditation, but there is the ability to have, you could say, premonitions. There's the ability to have genius-like creative thinking. Um, we take a look at people like Einstein, Leonardo da Vinci, um, you know, uh, Graham Bell, for example, all these inventors, what do they talk about? All They all talk about one thing in common, which I don't know if you've noticed this, Nathan, but they talk about the ability to tap into a higher power, to tap into the universe, right? They all talk about hey, look, these thoughts, these, these energies are out there. We're just able to tap into, right? That's what they, that's what they, they have. And if you take a look at their notes or diaries, that's the one of the main premise. One of the guys that I used to study quite a bit with Leonardo da Vinci, and that actually made me think, I'm like, how is this guy so brilliant? And he openly just said, it's, it's the universe. It's not us. So I, you know, let's go into that rabbit hole that we're talking about. Does meditation open up the ability for us to tap into this cool power that our brain has i personally believe so i personally sorry go ahead uh one of the things that we were discussing before we went on air and that i kind of discovered that we had in common you mentioned premonitions when i was younger i used to have this really uncanny ability that i would get a feeling that the phone was going to ring and then it would ring and i would know who it was going to be or I would, I would get a feeling that the door was going to, somebody was going to knock on the door. This was before cell phones and pagers and all of that. And somebody would knock on the door and it would be who I would think it was. And it got to the point where, especially in my early teenage years, I would just out loud in the room. I'd be like, hey, somebody's going to call. The phone's about to ring. It's going to be Katie. And then 30 seconds later, the phone would ring and it'd be my sister's friend, Katie. And people would just look at me weird. I don't do it anymore. I never get those feelings anymore. But you were telling me that you had similar experiences. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I don't want to make it sound like I was, you know, a, a special person. That's not what it is. I just actually studied the brain. I just studied meditation at a younger age when kids were out there playing. I was actually reading on this crap. I would sit there literally, and I think everybody has done this at some point in time, just sit there and focus and be like, okay, I'm just going to move this. But I would do it for hours. I would literally do it for hours, right? And I would do things like they call the think and pause technique, which Leonardo da Vinci used to do, which is basically cram all this information and, sh and then go into a dark room, shut the lights off and put yourself in a meditative state and allow these ideas and thoughts to come into your mind. And I swear, Nathan, all of this stuff, like I was a straight A student through high school, so you, you, through university, for example, I was known as the geek. The guy that went into a test without studying and, and scored 100%. And I, I walked in and I remember my teacher scoring my exam 
And all he did was put a hundred. He didn't even look through it. And I said, what are you doing? You have to take, take a look to see if it's actually correct. He's like, why am I wasting my time? I know you're going to get hundred percent anyways. <laughs> he said, you want to watch? I said, sure. And he actually went through and he marked it. He said, here, you got hundred <laughs> percent. And so it was nothing to do with being special. It was everything to do with being able to tap into that higher power. That's all it is. And yes, um, there was a point in my time in, in my life uh, that I, you could say lost this ability and that's all it is. It's training your mind. And it was between the age of 20 and 30, you can say, when I was going through life, I, I broke up with my ex. There's so many transitional things, stressful moments, partying, all, a lot of alcohol, a lot of the stuff that took away from my ability to get back into that state. So when you say, Nathan, you don't have those, those thoughts anymore, you can easily tap into them. And the challenge is, as we get older, we get a lot more stress in our lives. And that stress consumes our brain's ability to have this, to reach out to that higher power, because that's all it is. Think of it as your brain as an antenna, right? Your brain is literally like an antenna that can tap into energy, can tap into thoughts. But when your signal, it's like a TV, old school TV, but when your TV channel is always on a stressful channel, right? It's always thinking about what do I have to do next? What do I have to get done? What did I screw up in, in the past? That's taking away from all the frequency that you can tap into. So you can absolutely do that. Any person can do that. The first thing we need to do is remove the stress. That's why meditation is so cool because all meditation is, is it sinks your brain waves into that alpha state, right? And you can even if you go into a deep meditation, which monks have, I've never tapped into this myself to put myself to a brain scan to be able to say which levels of brain waves I can get into. But when you're in extreme meditation, you can get into what they call the gamma brain wave frequency and that is like the ultra fastest you can say the highest frequency of brain waves which is said to tap into genius mm. that's when you can actually tap into the universe and that's when you become one with consciousness so i want to take it back a little bit because some people might be saying man this is just crazy talk a book though that both me and you have talked about on the air um, as a man thinketh, one of the things that he talks about in that book is find somebody who's obsessed with a disease. If they're if they're mm -hmm. if they've convinced themselves that they're going to they're going to fall ill to cancer or to some other disease, chances are they will actually end up getting it. And then in and, and that sounds crazy, like, oh, just thinking about something and obsessing about it is going to make you get it that there's no way that could happen. But then we see things like the placebo effect where people heal themselves. They think they're getting medicine to cure some crazy disease and they're really just getting sugar pills and yet they get the beneficial effects of what they think the medicine would be doing for them. So obviously there is some kind of connection between your mind and at least at the very least between your mind and your physical body. Absolutely. So let's break that down into a science because especially when working with guys, a lot of guys, uh, you know, here's the reality though, Nathan, is that a lot of people are open to this actually a lot more than we think. But we don't want to believe it uh, because we don't want to feel like we're just nuts. So a lot of people are open to thinking that, yeah, there's more to this universe. There are. And people want to because people want to believe in something more than this physical realm. If we take a look at it from a science perspective, our atoms, the, the neutrons, the electrons, the, the smallest particles, which call planks, all rotate or they have a frequency. So everything in the universe has a frequency. Every atom has a frequency, for example. Every cell has a frequency or within that cell, there's frequencies. Every thought has a frequency. It's just like um, uh, airwaves or you know, radio waves. There's different frequencies that you tune into to get onto a different radio channel. Every single thing in life in the physical world has a frequencies. And there's an infinite amount of frequencies out there. So that's what science has shown right? This is quantum physics. This is scientists that are showing this. This isn't woo-woo stuff. So how does that work for your body? Because if you have a specific thought and that thought is negative, that has a specific frequency. And that thought actually radiates down to your cells. It's a given because what do you think? Yeah, it absolutely. It's connected. Your brain is connected to every single cell that you have because every cell works on basically your thoughts, your conscious thoughts and unconscious thoughts. So if you're constantly thinking about these negative thoughts that are at the specific brainwave, that's how your cells are going to align. 
So people will cause themselves to get sick. People will cause themselves to get better because what they are doing is allowing their cells or teaching or telling their cells to radiate at a specific frequency. Now, here's the thing. We think that there's things as such things as good and bad. And this is, goes back to ancient teachings. There's no such thing as good or bad. They're just opposite sides of the universe or energy. We've just attributed them to the way we live. So for example, cancer, yes, because it kills us, we think is bad, but it's just a part of life. It's just a part of the universe. And it radiates at a specific frequency, right? So we might think it's negative, but in all world, in the greater aspect of the universe, it's really not. It's just something different. But we can align ourselves with that frequency and cause ourselves to be sick. So that's why people say you shouldn't be having those negative thoughts. That's what, and there's been cases to prove it. For example, cancer patients that have sat there and put themselves on a happy, you can say, um, medical plan where all they do is, is watch happy movies, watch comedies, watch positive things, stay away from negativity, and they've been able to spontaneously heal themselves. So why is that? And our brain, our body has the ability to heal itself. It absolutely does. And what meditation does too, Nathan, here's the biggest thing. The biggest uh, killer in life, the biggest killer of happiness, the biggest killer of relationships, everything you can think of is stress. Mm -hmm. By far, it's stress. And it, stress comes from fear. It comes from anxiety. It comes from all these different aspects. But ultimately, it's a fear. That fear radiates at a specific frequency. And what that does is it stops your brain and it stops your body from healing properly. That's all it does. And what meditation does is it gets rid of that stress for those moments that you're able to get into that meditative state. And again, it doesn't have to be because there's different types of meditation. There's the, you could say traditional where you sit there like in a Zen pose or in some kind of a state where you're emptying your thoughts. That's tr tr the traditional, you can say more Eastern type of meditation, but there's another type of meditation that's active thinking. Yes, you get yourself out of a stressful state, but then you're actually thinking about certain things. So your mind is actually full of thoughts. That's a different um, type of meditation. So it depends on the person as well, what actually works for them. There's times that, for example, I, what I used to do when I was a kid, Nathan, is I used to walk around. So the way our house was situated was you could walk old school homes in the 80s you could, and the 70s. You could walk around through the kitchen, through the living room. Um, through, and basically, it was just an open circle. And I would walk around that for literally two or three hours in the afternoon after school and just straight and be like in a completely different state. And I, it didn't hit me until after because I thought that was normal. I never saw my brother doing that, but he used to watch more TV. And so I just thought maybe this is just my way of keeping myself entertained. I'm sure if someone saw me, they probably thought I was an autistic kid or something. <laughs> In all honesty, right? Okay, what kid does that? It's like, just, it, it was just like zombiness. And it didn't hit me until later on when we moved out of that house. We kept that house as a rental property that years later, we went back to replace the carpet. And I looked at that carpet and there are track marks on that carpet, like circular track marks, basically like an animal had been herded around it over and over and over again, like tracks through, through grass. And I just thought that's when it really hit me. I was like, wow, I must have been a weird kid or something, but I, you know, this, this is interesting, but what I was doing, and I'm sharing this is because all I was doing was going into active, active meditation. So my mind was consumed with thoughts as it was going through and just constantly being in that state. And so there's so many positives. This is this stuff is being taught now and it's been taught by traditional teachers, but there's more modern teachers, especially in North America now that are teaching a lot of this stuff um, that, that are out there. I don't teach it personally myself because it's not an area that I would say I'm um, uh, I'm not at the level where I could be a master to teach it. I only like to teach stuff that I'm like absolutely 110%. I'm like the expert and one of the best. Um, but I highly encourage everybody to, to take a look at it. So Nathan, for you, I want to go back to you because people are going to be sitting here thinking, uh, you know what, this is cool, but how do we tap into it? Um, for you, you know, is it something that you want to get back into? Uh, and you know, when you said that you don't get those thoughts, what do you think is a big reason why you don't get those thoughts anymore? 
I'm not exactly sure. And I'm not even sure that I want to have those feelings again because it always creeped me out. But I do want to get more into um, having more of a, I guess, more of a, a clarity of of myself and a clarity of my mind. And I do want those benefits that I see people have. Um, I've struggled with trying to med- meditate myself. I always end up thinking about all the different random stuff and it's hard for me to clear my head. I got so much noise going on in there all the time. Uh, but yeah, I do want to start getting into it. I do want to look deeper into it. Um, what do you recommend as, cause we're almost out of time here, but what do you recommend as resources? Are, are there people that are good to introduce people to when they're looking into this? Is, is there resources that uh, are good for the newbie, I guess? Yeah, there's, uh, there's two types of things that you can look into. You can take a look into hypnot, uh, you can say hypnotic techniques, because there's a blend between hypnotism and meditation, because there's a lot of people that play in both categories. Because when you hypnotize someone, you're actually putting them in a state of meditation, you're taking the brain waves to a different level. So I would, I would research that a little bit. Um, one, I'm a big fan of Joe Dispenza. Joe Dispenza is, is a great teacher out there. I followed him for uh, a while now in terms of the stuff that he teaches. Uh, he's got entry level stuff. He's even got books out there. So take a look at Joe Dispenza. He's a great person, great resource. And he does it from a scientific perspective as well, not just the woo. He understands the science behind it. So that's very important. I would, I would definitely take a look at that. And again, you don't have to sit there and empty your thoughts because here's the reality of this, uh, of, of where we are in traditional life. We're not in, in the same situation that we were in thousands of years ago where people could sit in a cave and meditate for hours or days, right? We have kids to take care of. We have jobs to go to. We got all of this other stuff. So society has changed. So active meditation is good. One of the things, Nathan, you could do is just practice the technique that I used to do was basically just cram if, if it depends on what you want to do. If you want to tap into genius, if you want to calm yourself down, there's different outcomes that you can actually have. But if you want to tap into creative genius, for example, it's, it's, I, I still do the think and pause technique, which is basically cram a bunch of information in over hours and put yourself in a dark room and just count down from a hundred. Just count down. Don't even worry about emptying your thoughts. Just count down and just be super relaxed, sit in your favorite chair, whatever that is, and just count down. And you will eventually, over time, get yourself into that state. Um, last point, because Nathan, you brought up something really good. And this is one of the reasons why I, I lost my ability to tap into those forces as well, is when you, when you get into the state, and this is kind of a caution or warning to the listeners out there as well, is when you get into those states, not only do you become hypersensitive to positive things in life, you get hypersensitive to the other side to life as well the negativity, you get hypersensitive to um, basically people's feelings, because that's one of the reasons why basically I couldn't handle it, because I, I could feel other people's emotions to such a depth, and animals emotions to such a depth, that it would cause me so much pain and anguish, that I basically said, I don't want to feel this anymore. And so you will, if, if that's something that you want, like a, that higher level of thought, you'll be able to tap into that. Now you have to learn how to control that. But that's just a cab. That's just a warning for you out there as well. Because if you start to say, hey, look, I'm becoming a lot more sensitive to stuff. I'm starting to cry for the sake. I have no idea why I'm crying or why I'm becoming emotional. Or I used to, you know, not even take a look at this, but now I'm actually being sensitive to this. That's as a result of being able to open up your mind. Man. I wish we had like more time to talk about this because there's other aspects uh, as we're leaving though. I, I do want to just give some, something for people to think about um, the world we live in and the way that uh, the, the media that most people consume and the way that most people are thinking, especially right now, the thoughts that are, that are most in the forefront of the majority of the whole world's mind right now could possibly be having an effect on society on the reality that we're living in and then the last thing that that uh, i just want to leave the show with is and this might again sound woo but if high stress if um constant negativity cause harm even on a cellular le- cellular level of us as human beings um th- I, again just throwing it out there, factory farms. And when we have our food, 
that's raised up, you know, shoulder to shoulder in abusive, abusive uh, environments where they're constantly stressed out and um, not living the way that those animals naturally would live. What does that do? What does that psychic mindset or psyche do to their meat? And then we ingest it. And what is that doing to us? Just strange things to think about. And again, we could probably go into 50 different tangents. Any, any last thoughts from you before we're out here today, Pradeep? Uh, yeah, my last thought is, if you're curious about this, I, I would highly just encourage you to go out there and research it. And don't let anybody tell you that you're crazy. Because once you get to that level where you actually experience or have your first experience, or maybe you've already had a first experience and you want to go to your second experience, you're going to be hooked. You're going to be like, wow, this is super awesome. This is super powerful. Um, and you're going to be able to use it to improve your life to such a degree that you're going to be like, wow, like this is awesome. So that's, that's the last thing I want to say. Nice. All right, man. Um, until next time, if people weren't, if people didn't think that we were complete wounds by this episode and they want to check out more, where can they find more episodes of the podcast? <laughs> well, I was going to send them to your, to your uh, website first, but if you want to check out more of this, uh, you can check out YouTube for men.com or mailpodcast.com. All right, man. We will catch you later. <laughs> yeah. Till next time. <laughs>